Hey folks, my name is Chris Wessel. Today we're going to be tying a fly called the Swedish Killer. Admittedly, I've never ever fished this pattern before, but as soon as I seen it, I said, yep, I gotta try that one. So without further ado, let's get on into it. Today we're going to be tying our fly on a size 6 uh, partridge low water hook. Low water salmon hook actually, I think it's a code N. Anyway. All right, we're going to be using TechStream Power Thread to start. And we're just going to come down the body with this. Guys, I'm super pumped to try this fly out this year. I saw it and I was like, yeah, this is exactly what I want. All right, so for the tag of this fly, we have some silver oval. And we're gonna do uh, maybe four wraps, maybe five, we'll see. Yeah, let's do one more. And just where it's a, ooh, oopsie. Just where it's a uh, black hook, I know this tag's gonna show up pretty good, so. Why not? And there's no ribs through the body on this, so it's not bad to have a nice little prominent tag when it's going to be the only silver on the pattern. All right. So for the body on this, all chenille. Uh, we're using a micro chenille for the butt of this fly, and this one's in a flow yellow. I think the pattern calls maybe just for a yellow, but I don't think our fish will mind. And we're just doing two uh, wraps, sorry. Oops, cut that. Make sure we anchor that in nicely. Come back. Now we're going to come and use a little bit of a larger size uh, black chenille. This stuff is nice because I could just strip it with my fingers and I don't have to burn it off like I do with the other stuff. And we want to bring our thread up so this yellow is really only supposed to be like one third of the body of this fly. And we're supposed to go two thirds with this black. Um, we want to give ourselves a lot of room at the uh, head of this fly because there's a couple moving parts here that we need to accommodate for. You'll see what I mean. All right, so that's all in. Uh, next, we got to put a wing on this, and today we're using gray squirrel for that. On a side note, don't do what I have done and made a couple weird cuts throughout the squirrel tail because I was looking for some choice uh, fur because now it seems like every time I cut a piece off from the bottom up, I get a lot of cut ends in it. And it kind of ruins what I'm looking for. We lucked out here, there's not a whole lot, but when I was practicing for this fly, I almost threw the tail away. There is some there, but we're just going to roll with it. And I'm just going to come in and size up where I want to put my tail. And sorry guys, you're not really seeing much of this because I need to concentrate on how I'm doing it. I need to turn the hook up. That's pretty much where I want that and I'm just gonna put a spot of head cement on this cut end as you know that just kinda secures it in place so the second part of this fly calls for a blue collar where this wing meets the hook so we're going to um, it calls for a rooster, rooster um, 
rooster neck, I believe, or roost, yeah, probably rooster neck. Uh, but I use, I typically always uh, sub that out for um, hen saddle because I like that webbier, richer look. You don't want to go too crazy with the um, the length of your collar, I guess, because uh, it's going to really dominate over the back end of this fly. It's a size 6 hook, but remember we also tied this back um, further than, uh, than you would if you were tying this without what we're about to do after this part. <laughs> So I'm just tying in the tip of this. I'm just going to clean that up a little. Alright, I'm going to get some hackle pliers. Yeah, so I think this fly is really going to push a lot of water. It's really going to make a nice wake behind it. And that's... Uh, that's a really, really uh, helpful method here locally when you're uh, swinging a fly. Mm. Do I want to do? Yeah, let's do one more. Maybe we're getting a little bit out of hand here, but why not? They won't be able to, the fish won't be able to say they didn't see the blue. Alright, so we're just going to kind of tease those fibers back a little bit. Pick up some stuff that... Is in, yep, perfect. And you just want to kind of take this opportunity to have a little look around your fly. Make sure you got a pretty good distrib distribution of uh, fibers. And I'm just going to come on up here because now we are going to put on almost like a muddler head on this. So for that purpose today, I'm going to use some roe deer that I have uh, all ready to go here. And we're just going to use one clump. And we'll spin, take our time just to carefully spin that around the hook. Honestly, I'd fish it like this. <laughs> Now, right now you can either um, put a little knot in that thread and cut it off, get it out of the way. Uh, I did both ways when I was kind of practicing for this fly. And I think we're just going to try trimming it while the thread is still on there. And we're just going to make almost like a little ball of fur here um, at the front of our fly. And I would imagine that this is basically for uh, waking um, this fly. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to get rid of some of this up here so I can actually tie this thread off now. Because I don't want to risk too much um, cutting that thread. So now uh, we're going to trim it up in the back a little bit and basically um, I'm just kind of coming down against the feather and then coming up and you should, only, if you had uh, measured your deer hair out when you cut off the extra part, um, your deer hair should have been a little bit less in length than the feather so you can use that method which is push down on the feather and come up with the blade and it should 
should pretty much just be deer fibers in your scissors at that point. Down. Up. Yeah, you might cut the odd little feather fiber, but that's all right. I am so jacked to try this fly. I even know the spot I'm going to use it. So I will use this for uh, brook trout and salmon. Um, I can see it having a purpose in targeting both species. And um, if you want to separate some of that webbiness in the feather, you can just come through with a dubbing uh, tool, like a wire dubbing tool, and it should separate that feather around a bit. I mean, this thing isn't the prettiest on earth, but it's going to make some magic happen, I can just tell. Oh, yeah. All right, so we're going to finish off with a little bit of head cement up here. And that is a Swedish killer. The Swedes ain't playing with this fly. Loving it. Thank you folks for popping by. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, uh, I'd love it if you did so. It helps me out. If not, totally cool as well. And until next time, take care.